My name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to thank all 1,624 subscribers globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. I promise not to transmit any of your information to any third party. Okay, so today what we're going to do is part two of a segment that I published uh, about a month ago called How to Make a Reference Field Look Like a Choice Field in London. And I was reminded uh, by one of my colleagues, um, I don't want to butcher his name too much, but um, I believe it's Kalarasan uh, Pushpanathan, and um, Cool Cal, as I would like to refer to him, is on the community. Um, he's a great font of knowledge. He's an MVP, um, knows a lot about ServiceNow. Um, so <clears throat> I think that uh, it would be a good idea maybe if, if you guys follow him. Um, but he did remind me that there is another way to go about implementing the solution um, in the video that I posted last month. So if you remember, um, our we started out with an assignment group field that kind of looked like this. When you clicked into it, it had a tree picker structure going there with this group hierarchy. And basically we said, you know what, this is a lot of punishment for our our service desk and we don't want them to have to go through and if you recall this is on the incident table right now we're looking at the change but basically the point was we don't like this because it's not searchable and um, basically um, every service desk agent is going to end up with sore knuckles having to scroll through this thing so it's just not a good idea so our scenario is this that our incident manager really wants a setup kind of like this assignment group here where it opens up nicely and you can have different columns put in um, the list in order to figure out um, which assignment group it is. And in the case where you might have assignment groups that kind of sound or look alike, um, you have other discriminators like manager, maybe time zone, um, where you could filter by that and say, you know what, I really need to assign it to a group in the um, US central time zone, for example. So I'm gonna show you right now um, how to get to what we call dictionary override and we're going to implement the dictionary override um, two times <clears throat> in order to show the different ways that we can um, put in different attributes and make it behave differently as you've seen between incident and change so in order to get into um, the dictionary for assignment group we can come to the form if we want to we could also type in dictionary here and then kind of go that way too but basically, I know which field I want right now because I'm looking at it, and I'm going to click Configure Dictionary, and that's going to take us to a screen that kind of looks like this. We're going to see here the assignment group is coming off the task table, which means that if we go ahead and put attributes in here, it's going to extend on down to the other tables, like Incident, Problem, or Change, unless we have this dictionary override um, put in there. One thing I wanted to note about the solution last month if you were having problems getting the, the choice um, select box to appear instead of your traditional um, reference field set up, so the difference would be something like, you see assignment group here? This is basically what a reference field looks like. You see impact right here? This is kind of what your choice field looks like. Um, if we look at problem, you'll see it looks like a choice field, but also one thing we did last month was we made it searchable. So you have this little magnifying glass here, which is kind of nice. So going back here, um, just wanted to note that you have to have, in this choice list specification, you're going to have to have either a drop down with none, without none, um, this first selection, or this one selected in order for it to appear that way. Because if I change this to none right now, even though I have a dictionary override on problem, I want to show you what happens to our assignment group field. Let's focus right here. And it's taking a second for it to load. It's taking its time today, isn't it? See, it turns back into a reference field. So if you had problems with those attributes that I gave you, it was one of two things. It was either the number, which was 500 and the one that I think I set up, or 5,000. It means you, you need to have a higher number in order to facilitate the number of assignment groups. The other um, reason would have been that, um, just what I showed you there, which was this choice list specification has to be changed to drop down without none. So now if I change it back <clears throat> and I reload the form, now we'll notice also that it didn't affect um, any of the other ones. So, so for incident or change, which we want to look like reference fields, it won't, it won't affect them. So 
at least that's current day behavior. So we'll see what happens. And I'm working in London, by the way. So um, if you're in another version, I doubt it, it changed, but I just wanted to note that. So let's take a look at um, our problem dictionary override. And the way we got to the dictionary override, let's just scroll down a little bit, is that you'll see this related list right here um, called dictionary overrides. When you click new, it's gonna take you into a screen that kind of looks like this. You'll change the table name and then you'll see here, see the override attributes? You'll check that box. So it'll be blank like this. And then what you'll do is you'll just cut and paste this stuff in here. So last month I used 500. If you have more than 500 um, assignment groups, then guess what's gonna happen? It's not going to change. So you have to make this a number higher than what's in that list. And then this search is searchable choice is true. Um, this dictates that little magnifying glass that I showed you. And then here we have our, um, th this right here, this attribute just basically changes the behavior of it to a choice. So that's one example of um, an attribute. And then uh, the other one, and before I get to that, what I, one thing I wanted to note was that uh, Third Republic, our sponsor, is going to be having a meetup at their headquarters in London next month. So I still don't have the details on it, but this is the contact person, Brad Potter. Um, their new headquarters is pretty awesome. I was doing a teleconference with them the other day and I could hear a pool table in the background. So it's kind of like um, one of your Silicon Valley startup type of operations. So it is pretty cool. And he actually showed me, um, just gave me like a little virtual tour of what's going on there. So also one thing I wanted to note was that um, Brad's looking for ServiceNow Consultant in Europe. Uh, for GRC and SecOps, and then I believe also he had another one in London um, for just a regular HR consultant role. Um, so if you know HR or you know GRC SecOps, uh, give Brad a ring. And um, again, this is information on LinkedIn. Uh, don't be bashful, please connect with him. Um, he's looking for candidates. So here's another example of the, the dictionary override so let's say we didn't want to have the tree picker um, on everything that extends task so we just made one for change request so when we go into change request we'll see right now that we have this tree structure as I showed before now if I were to take this away like let's say I just blanked that out and I saved it and now we'll see what we get when I hit reload form now it should appear exactly like the incident one uh, when we click into the box. So this is basically just going to change the behavior of it. So now you can see right there um, that it's functioning a little bit differently. So that's one of the things that you can do with dictionary overrides. Also, a couple of other things that you can do is that if you want to override the read-only, you could do that. Um, override it, whether it's mandatory, you, you could do that also. It just depends on what's going on here um, in your um, dictionary entry. So basically, if you had it read only and you wanted to make it not read only, you would go into a dictionary override and, and do that. So that's our, our segment for today. Um, my name is Jason Miller, founder of AspenNow Solutions, and we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.